We're ready. Okay. We're I forget because I always put my real glasses up and so. Today is May 13th. It's the policy subcommittee meeting. Let's just go around the room and say who's here, please. Andrew, we will start with you. Andrew Henney is the attorney for the committee. Kenny Dewey, superintendent. Connor, all school committee chair. Jennifer Lima, school committee member. First on the agenda is citizens' comments, or second on the agenda is citizens' comments. I don't see anybody here. Next is approval of the May 1st meeting minutes. Can I get May 1st? Oh, yeah. May 1st. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I get a motion to Wait, approve? What is time? Chair, I'll with it. I did read that my promise. It just caught me that it was only, it was May 1. I know. Um, I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, voting members are myself, Dr. Duva, and Dr. Earl. Um, so, we've got several things on the agenda tonight. I don't expect us to get through all of them. Um, some are, I won't say it because whenever I say it, it's not true, but no, the first two, um, IJOA field trips and IJOB outside speakers are holdovers from when we did a review of our updated, um, when we updated ACAB to make sure all of our other policies were in compliance with it. And they just have two very small changes that were recommended that we make in order to be in compliance with that. The first one for field trips was the recommendation was that we remove the section nine on that policy regarding recreational trips that are not sponsored by the district and not sanctioned by the school committee because in reality then that is not something that is a district activity. Um, so their thinking was it should not even be. Can you clarify for me who they is? Uh, UCAT, sorry. Thank you. Because our policy says that field trips aren't supposed to be connected to an academic, you know, or curricular type reason. And these are basically recreational and not academic function. And they're not, um, sponsored or sanctioned by the school committee or the superintendent or paid with district funds. Why is that in this policy? I don't know. That's what I always think about like when we're trying to, when we're like thinking about removing things, I always just think like, like when I read why this, would somebody do that? I don't think of this as a field trip. What I think of this is like the clubs at the high school when they arrange a trip to go skiing. What I was just about to say, and I, and I actually, I, I spoke with Rob about this like maybe two or three months ago. Um, you know, teacher um, is organizing a foreign, a, a, a trip to Denmark, you know what I mean? But doing it on her, her own or his her, her own or his own, but talking to kids in class. I, I'm assuming maybe that this is what this is pointed towards to make sure if you're doing something like that, it's got to be clear that it's not a school function, it's not school sanctions, that sort of thing. Actually, this policy says such trips may not be promoted on school department property, so it wouldn't e either. But I mean, that's the yeah. guidance, right? Yeah. You shouldn't. Right. You shouldn't be doing that. Right. I, I would leave it in here to cover it, because this way, anything that's being offered outside of school, but is part of. It. I mean, because what we're what, what we're just saying is that if there's a after school club and they're going to go and do something right We're no this is saying it's not connected to any academic or school sponsored activity so the ski club would not fall underneath that but i know what andrew's talking about i'm yeah. trying to think of what the so fact like, pattern was but it was it was so, real so, so so what about the out of the out of country trips that the kids go on that are advertised to our students but are not Help sponsored like they just went to Ireland, right? That was through an outside organization. Right. Sometimes there's other trips where they go out of the country yep. that are offered to them, but are not school sponsored. Right. But this I think would, the issue with this policy, the intent with looking at this policy, is liability and who is responsible for ensuring the student safety. And so, like with an outside agency, it's the outside agency who is responsible for that. It is not the district. Am I correct? Yeah, and I think that by I think. That's why I'm looking at, you know, such trips may not be promoted on school department property. 
So in, in, in Dr. Duva's example, then we wouldn't even, you know, that we isn't something email, that we, we wouldn't would... We wouldn't put it in our newsletter. Ex we exactly. wouldn't put a flyer up in the building. Yep, exactly. So I think, and I hear what you're saying, Jen, about like the liability insurance and whatnot, but I almost wonder like if this isn't in here, then like what does explain to people that like those types of trips are not allowed to be advertised in the school or not allowed to be emailed, et cetera? I mean, no, no, no. I guess my other thing yeah. would be like the, the way it's written right now. It specifically says these are not sanctioned by the school committee or the superintendent. So, is that what needs to change? Because I think these were all tightened based on issues of professional boundaries and those types of things. Yeah. And so that's why specifically for this one, like it basically says. It's a recreational trip, not school sponsored, not school sanctioned. Um, school staff and faculty members are acting in their in individual capacity, not as employees or representatives of the district. Trips not be promoted as an activity of the district. I mean, so I think that was the concern was that you're basically saying we have nothing to do with it, but yet it's in our policy, like it is a field trip, and it's not. Maybe it's just, I wonder if a compromise would be not having it on the like list. So like, you know, like there's one through nine, right? So I wonder if it's doing a subheader that says like non-affiliated programs or not, you know, like something yeah. else like it could be within this and maybe we even change the title of it to field trips and like recreation activities that are you know like what you know like make it a little more clear that there's two different things there's field trips and then there's you know the i'm trying to think of a good example the track coach also works for a nonprofit that's doing something and some of the students might go like with that or eagle scouts or whatever like like i feel like it should be there but i'd see where like I see what you're saying I'm about like play not having advocate it. Here. Yeah. So that happens, and God forbid, there's an incident yeah. there with that coach. Whose responsibility is that? The districts, or is it the outside organizations? No, it's definitely not the districts. Yeah, no. I mean, what we what, and, and by the way, this is yeah. not a, a, a North Kingston issue. I mean, what we usually do in, in these cases, they, they come up all the time. Is if the school district does allow the outside agency to utilize a newsletter, a go home. I mean, we have very explicit language that says this is not a school-sponsored event. This is not sanctioned by the school. This, and then you, you know, you hope for the best. I, I, I would say no. I mean, could they sue the school department? Of course they could. Would we say, hey, here's our, you know, here's our notice and disclaimer that this is not ours. We made very clear to you that it wasn't school-sponsored. It was, you know, we agreed like we do with the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts to let a notice go home, but we don't control any of it. Um, I think as long as you maintain that you're not controlling any of it you're protected legally. Do we have access to the um, original recommendation of where this came from? Did it? Yep, it says it's recommended that NKSD make the following revisions to the policy. Where, where are you reading? I, I just want uh, to read it. It's from the, I'll send it to you, but it says delete the entire paragraph nine, recreational trips, blah, 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 because it could be considered prohibited conduct under the discrimination and harassment, including sexual harassment policy and grievance procedures. I mean, I understand why, I, I, I think I understand why they were making that recommendation, but with that said, I, I do think that this should exist somewhere. Um, because the, whether it's a policy, whether it's a procedure, I mean, it, this does come up quite yeah. often with school districts in general. Do we have, oh, go ahead. Is it a field trip though, or is it something else? It's not a field trip. So that, I think I, I, it, it it's, And I think that, that might policy. be what yeah. she was referring to. Like why, do, and, and to be honest with you, and I'll tell you, you know, sort of, when I discuss with this with Rob, I looked through policies. I never looked in the field trip policy. Yeah, because I, I wasn't like thinking it's, it wasn't a field trip. Don't we have a policy that um, addresses, like, kind of what Andrew was talking about with the like, you know, the Boy Scouts are doing something and we put a flyer in and the we community send it to the community relations or yeah. something like that section mm -hmm. of a policy. There's usually that's where you typically find these. Yeah. Yep. I'm trying to think what you guys have. So another school district has a separate policy on non-school sponsored trips. So it's, a, yeah. it's a very short policy. Yeah. Yep. And it's less than a page. So it's <coughs> and so what we could do is just take this out and then yep. and have a separate policy yep. on non-sponsored yep. non non-school sponsored trips, which 
kind of gets to the point of this. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's more where it belongs. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not a. I'm just going to print this example and not let it get. Yeah. I think, too, we could also. Yeah, I think that would help it clarify, too, for people, like, when it can be advertised. Because right now, it, like, you should, we should not be sending a flyer out. It should not be posted on a wall mm -hmm. at the school. Um, and if we want to change that, we would need to make it, like, unless, like, approved by the superintendent or whatever, and then that obviously changes it. Like, yeah. in there only because I'm not sure. Otherwise, you I mean, can't have anything. And right. I mean, nothing would be yeah. able to go out, but it should be something that would approve, you know, only, you know, it have to be pre-approved by the superintendent yeah. to send this. With a caveat of so, this is not a sponsored yeah. by the school department. Mm -hmm. Right, but the notice yeah. to send it has been approved, but the event itself is not sanctioned. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we can move. We, I would definitely support moving this out, but like to Angel's point, putting it somewhere, or a version of it somewhere. Yeah. And then, is there any other part on this one? Uh, I think to? there was one that was a. Um, um, my question was under that it's just two, one fix for inclusive language, and there's one typo. But then the other thing was under section three in this, it says. All field trips require approval of the superintendent using the district field trip request form that can be found on the district website under the administration slash transportation tab. I just wanted to make sure that that was still accurate as of this right So I have questions on that as well. Okay. Um, I don't think it was on the website anymore. No, I'm looking. I'm going looking. to go back and look because I want to say that's why I had it. And I also put here, if we can add in where it says approval of the superintendent, superintendent, or assistant superintendent, because they are going through his office, not mine. Yep, so anywhere it says superintendent? Yes. Okay. Um, the other question I had about that piece of it was, in addition to just the accuracy of the statement, the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The field, what was the other word they used instead of trip? Field experience, field? Yeah, no, it is there. Where? No, I'm the oh. field trip form is on the website. Oh, good. Um, field experiences, I wasn't sure what that. Where is that? It's on the first sentence. It says the school committee holds to the educational philosophy that field trips or field experiments are a valuable component of a student's overall educational experience. Oh, I think, I think, and Ken, you can know better, like when they bring the chicks in from Casey Farm, to me, that's a field yep. experience. Yeah, because it says field trips and experiences, yep. that is an integral part. Yeah, so my question is, are they filling out that form for those sort of things as well? No, because they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Not for, if they're bringing someone in, they would not be filling this out because this is very specifically about you're going somewhere, so you're looking yep. for approval. But also, <clears throat> it's a lot about transportation, who's going, how many people are going. Yep. So, so no. Okay. That's just something that gets planned internally with the building principal. Should we take that out then? I guess that that one little section is only talking about field trips. I guess it doesn't reference field experiences yeah, like doesn't, anywhere doesn't in this document. It just says field experiences. Oh, yeah. And we can remove and experiences and you still have the same purpose throughout the document. Yeah. I had one other suggestion just reading through under number five. It says administration will pre select field trips. And I just wanted to clarify that that it the administration in collaboration with principals and grade level teams. Just through conversations I've had this year with the admin team and teachers about what field trips are being selected, when and why. Did you write that down somewhere? I have it right. Can yeah, you I just make a copy of it and give it to me? It's yeah. easier for me to. Yeah. Okay. Or just in collaboration with who? Yeah, I was gonna say maybe. Yeah, one yeah in <laughs> collaboration with principals and grade level teams. Principals and grade level teams. Okay. Okay. And are we eliminating experiences? I would, I would just keep this to field trips. So. Okay. Um, 
Is there anything that we need to cover for experiences? So, for example, like the people coming in from Casey's farm bringing well, ten chickens. That, so, what was what was the other policy? Outside speakers. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. So, it's good time. With this one? I did not have anything else. I just sent you a sample policy for non okay. school sponsored. So we'll make these yes. changes. We'll move that number nine into its own policy as non school, whatever Ken just said. Okay. Non school sponsored trips. Okay, non school sponsored trips. Should we reference? Maybe we could come back and do that later. Like once that's created, it might be worth referencing it in here like to say like for not like you know you could say like please refer to bc whatever like for non, non ones yeah like yeah. and then cross reference yep. it just so that people know where to look they relate to each other yeah yeah well, we would have to do that after the exit okay um so do you want to do you need a motion mm -hmm. All right, so I move that we move the field trips um, policy to the school committee with the edits that we have outlined today. A second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And as part of that motion, are we also bringing a newly created um, non-sponsored, or do you want that back here in the policy subcommittee? I would have it in the policy. I think it should come first back here first, first yeah. Because okay. that way, if you look at what Ken gives an example, and then look at what we existing have, and then have, like, I feel like it yeah, might be cut and paste, but it might not be. Just want to make sure. I yeah. Okay. Um, Jen, just for this one, too, I know I just made it, but um, maybe updating it so it's like parent or guardian. Yeah, no, I think I said that, yeah. that inclusive yeah. language and the typo. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Next one. Outside speaker. So this one, there was literally one change that was recommended to this to the policy, um, and that was to insert in section number two of the policy statements that instead of just saying they must follow all school policies, that it say must school must follow all school policies and procedures. Um, and then while going through it, I found a typo in that it wasn't updated for inclusive language, so I just made those changes also. But that was it. Um, one just grammatical, well not, not really gra grammar, but the suggestion under number one, it says that um, information should go out on a listserv message and hard copy. Could we put listserv message or hard copy? Just because we don't send much, many notices home in backpacks anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you, bless you. <coughs> Did everything else look okay with that? So do you want it to be listserv? Is it listserv oh, wait, message like, like or? Definitely or, like one or the other. Because we do get a lot of handouts at the elementary level in the folders, which is an effective method of communicating. You know, like I... I look at the folder when I look at my email, like like when we're, you know, the daily shuffle of stuff. So I think or would be fine as long as I think the intent of that is that parents and guardians are notified that someone's coming in. Right. So and or or just or? I think it can be just or, like personally, but I don't think it needs to be both. Okay. I think as long as it's folks are officially notified. Is that going to make teachers be like, oh, though I sent out a hard copy, I can't send it out on this sort because if it says or, it's one or the other. Other than that, Ken? Mm -hmm. okay. I'll make a motion to move this one forward with the changes we just discussed. 
Um, Jen, just one more question, sorry. Um, IJOC, it references it's that. the uh, BCI check. Yep. Yep. That still can pl like that still has the side in procedure. Yes. Yep. Okay. I just want to make sure I yep. whenever we're doing that. Can I get a second? Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Community resource person slash speakers. I would just call it yeah. like you know, like that just isn't. I don't know. Just I think it can be cleaner. Um, we can do it at this at the school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So the next two are going to be like a bigger conversation, but I wanted to get the conversation started today about um, attendance. So. As with many of the older policies, we have two. Um, one is like the policy, and one is um, like the regulations. For purposes of the discussion, I merged the two so that we could have a conversation with them both in one document, and that's the one under um, red line attendance. Um, so, some of the questions that I have right off the bat is you know, this policy hasn't been updated in a long time, so. I was hoping that the administration could review the philosophy um, because the current philosophy says the goal is to assist students in obtaining a meaningful proficient students by the other grade level and ultimately to meet the graduation requirements. Attendance is crucial in providing support and intervention, which I think is all still true, but I'm wondering if there might not be like additional philosophy around the importance of attendance since the sure. policy was drafted. In the global pandemic. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and so then um, we also did have some changes that were recommended um, as part of the review, which was to um, expand the definition of excused um, absences, tardies, et cetera, to include for the purposes of supportive measures or reasonable modifications as described in the discrimination and harassment policy and grievance procedures. And Andrew, are we just, would we just reference our policy number there? Because at that point we didn't have yep, policy, the policy. Yep, ACB, I think it is, yep. Yeah, at that time. Um, and then going through it, I just, some of my quick questions were like, when, I think this whole thing needs to be updated, but some of the things that I noticed were like absence notification procedure in elementary and middle school. Um, it says that, um, the, the reasons for an excused absence don't match the reasons that are listed above. So I feel like they need to um, match the two. Like if we're saying these are the reasons for an excused absence, they should be consistent throughout the entire document. Um, the, the <laughs> there's a use of the word for appeals. It says parents and guardians who feel aggrieved. I'm not sure that's the best word for that concept. Yeah. What's that? I said it sounds legally. It's yeah. very legally. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's very, very legally. Um, yep. And then um, there's some inclusive language that needs to be put in. Um, and then same thing with the, um, when we get down to the high school, it talks about, uh, it kind of expands the absence notification procedure. And it says that excuses won't be accepted later than two days after the school absence. There isn't any timeline listed for elementary or middle school, only for high school, and I wondered, like, is that only a timeline in high school? Is two days still the um, reason for that? And is there a reason why we're only accepting excused absences up to a certain point? I, I don't expect an answer, I'm just throwing these things yeah, I will out there. Look into that, you know, I'll ask about that and see why, um, if there's something specific. And then I know this had come up one other time before about students who were over the age of 18 or under the age of 18, and I know that the handbook now says that students who are over the age of 18 cannot sign themselves out, and I'm questioning whether that's legal because they're adults, um, and um, 
how can they not be allowed to do adult things like that? Mm -hmm. So I think the way I've seen this done before is they can sign themselves out, but that it may not be an excused absence. There has to be some kind of a verification on the back end of that excusal. Yes. Um, you know, and, and I, I, yeah. So, you know, if I'm an 18 year old student and I've got a doctor's appointment, I mean, in theory, I should be able to say I've got a doctor's appointment at three o'clock today. I'm, you know, but that's easily. I know. I know a lot of schools actually do do this. They won't let eighteen-year-olds sign themselves out. I don't know that it's been challenged. I think it's. I think you probably can or can't not let them. I mean, they're eighteen. Right. Yeah. But I think that the thought process is: well, you're in school. You're ours. We are not going to just have you sign out because you want to take the afternoon off. That's not an excused absence. No, that could be an ex unexcused absence. In theory, right? But also, yep. should we just yep. be letting them leave, though? I, I understand they're 18 and they're adult, but they're in school and they're supposed to be in school. And should we just, because you're 18, oh, it's, be it's nice out. I'm going to leave it to What happens if an 18-year-old wants to drop out of school? Oh, they go. They go. They drop out. It, it's a, it's a, it wouldn't hold it. Wouldn't hold up. I just got the email from my son's school because yeah. the prom's coming up. Like eighteen year, it doesn't matter whether you're eighteen or not. You are not able to sign yourself up. So I know a lot of doing. I think you want to. I don't. I think liability. there's a difference between. Uh, I don't see. know if you do have the liability though. That's I guess a question. You know, like if an eighteen year old follows the procedure, signs themselves out without parent permission, I don't know if the school has the liability at that point. Well, and that's the first part, right? It follows yeah. the procedure. They could I think we all agree at 18, truancy, you can't just say, right? well, I'm 18, I'm, I'm Or if leaving. you do, then you yeah. suffer the consequences yeah. for it. Would they get in trouble for yeah. truancy over 18? No, the truancy officer said they can't pursue a truancy charge. Yeah, so, yeah. like, they, we have nothing. Like, like, and oh, of course we, rather, no, of I, course we want eighteen year olds to right, stay in school and stuff. But like I'm saying, the, from a legal standpoint, I'd rather look into the legality of yeah. it. Yeah, let me, let me see school, what some other policies yeah. do as well. Because that we hold and yeah. be yeah. responsible for the students that are in the school. Yeah. Well, right now our so. handbook is in direct contradiction to our policy because our policy clearly says that a student who is over the age of eighteen is allowed to do this. So, what happens in a situation like that, Andrew? I mean, to the policy it usually is the it's hierarchy. Higher, right. if, now, with that said, if someone takes an action based on the handbook and we end up at ride, I, 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 they've got a legitimate case. Right. Like, look, I'm, I, I'm the parent. I sign off that I read the handbook, or I'm the student. Yeah. I read the handbook. This is what the handbook tells me. So. So I think this is one that needs to be discussed and cleaned up. Um, and. Um, so it also says here, students shall only be permitted to make up work and assessments missed during excused absences. And I wanted to make sure, is that the current practice? Is that the best practice? Is that what we're actually doing? Um, Where are you? I just want to come noting this. Um, Jen, if you look at it in um, colored print, you'll see, it's a, I mean, you can see it where Jen's like written. So I think we're on page, not on page numbers. There's also a thing in here about the eighth tardy per quarter junior and seniors lose their parking privileges. So my question is like, because it doesn't say is that forever? Is it for the quarter? Is it for the year? Like what is the, um, the time limit for that? Um, and then I, I guess the biggest thing in this is like how do we address cases where students are unable to go to the doctor or need to stay home because of the safety of other students in the class but they themselves don't need to go to the doctor like um, we have had the, the Department of Health saying you don't need to like you, like if you have a cold and you need to stay home we don't expect you or we shouldn't require you to go to the doctor and I think this policy is very rigid in terms of it does not provide for excused absences it doesn't provide for any mental health support it doesn't provide for any of that and I just think a lot has changed in the land since 2011. If anybody I, I bet I wonder if another school district has updated theirs recently like I bet no okay I'll can check be, I was just also looking at Ride's website about, like, because obviously attendance is a big thing for them right now. Um, and so, Jen, I do think putting in some of their statistics in the philosophy piece about, like, you know, the chronic absenteeism and 10% or more of the school year has an effect. You know, like, yeah. the whole thing is, like, we don't want you just in school to be in school. Like, we know there's statistically a there's a exactly. reason. Yeah. yeah. And so I think putting some of that in... Um, 
could be helpful as well in, in kind of the goal. Um, yeah, I just feel, I feel like a lot has changed in terms of the way we approach things since yeah. 2011. Post COVID, it, Post -COVID it, it, yeah. it has changed a lot. But I, I, I will double check. I haven't seen it because I've actually I had to answer this question a number of times from parents who, yeah, I, I, Andrew's home. He's got a sore throat, and we're not sending him in. But I'm also not going to take him to the doctor because yeah. I don't need to take him to mm -hmm. the yeah, And excused, unexcused, I'm talking about a middle school or a high school kid. Mm -hmm. And it, I, it's, you know, well, it's most also, districts have something similar to this if we don't get a doctor's note. The elementary yeah. seems to be more flexible is what I've seen, but the middle and high school, they basically say if you don't have a doctor's note, it's unexcused. And I know I don't have any cases at Bride right now, but I've had a lot of pushback from parents on that, which is, you know, either number one, I, I, I have a cost, a copay or yeah. something like that, mm -hmm. I can't do it, or number two, he's, Andrew's got the stomach bug, and I'm not taking him to the doctor. He'll be back in school in 48 yeah. hours. And it, it's a... It, it's a, it's a it's a tough you know what I mean I, I see both sides right. of it um. yeah especially when you know it, it when it's also listed you can't make up you can only make up work during an excused absence so technically yeah, that's, that's not an excused absence yep. and they can't make up the work so so can I guess my ask would be like can you all review this on your end in terms of like what's actually happening because I think some of this touches on some conversations we've had on other policies that are being reviewed. Like there may be unofficial practices that are happening now that maybe are not straight according to the policy that we should bring into the policy. And then some things that in the policy could be revised to reflect, you know, current thoughts around what's best for students. Yes, I've we'll, seen some that we'll, do like we'll a number. This for the excused absences too. Like in other words, if your parent calls you in, you're a high school student, you know, that's fine for the first three or four yeah. times. I'm just, but but obviously then if it's a different situation, you know, with one Epstein's mom, I don't think that we're requesting doctor's notes every time they're out for it to be excused. No, we don't think that that's so. happening either, but that means we're out of compliance with the policy. Right, right, right. no, I know, yeah. I'm just saying, because like what, what we're saying, I, yep. I don't think we're but holding what I recall being said students. was we're not, asking for the doctor's note, but it does impact whether it's an excused or an unexcused absence, yep. which, which then ties into rights, yeah. how much, and also how much time they have to turn in the assignment. It's also affecting our, our like, right dashboard data. I don't think right care is excused or unexcused absence. No, oh, that's right, yeah. which is why. They just look at absences. Yep. So that's our, just our own internal thing. We care about tardies. Yeah, so, and the same logic conversation goes for all the tardies that are listed in here, also. Yeah. And Andrew, maybe there's a better legalese term than aggrieved. <laughs> I will. <laughs> That's our term. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can find an alternative. I, mean, I can to guarantee aggrieved. you, parents probably do feel aggrieved. Yeah. You know when they get that letter, but like maybe there's one that's slipped. unhappy or angry because yeah. of unfair treatment is the definition of aggrieved. Unsatisfied. 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 Um, well, aggrieved at not being chosen for the team. It's a good word. I mean, we probably should bring it back. Yeah, definitely think hearing from the building administrators and 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 the the teachers, et cetera, about like the actual practices versus the policy, and then also how we can um, you know align those two things, but also make sure that you know the goal is trying to encourage students to come to school and making sure that that folks know it matters. Um, I think that. You definitely don't want like inconsistency there because then people are just kind of making up their own choices and that's not great. Um, does our policy reference anything about vacations? No. It yes, it does. it does. It does. Yep, I thought I saw that in one of them. It said. I just saw it in another policy, oh, and I don't remember it seeing it in ours, but. I thought it did. Hang on. I don't. It's not in this one. It may be in the grading one, but not in this one. Just something to consider. Um, this one particularly, and it was literally the first one that popped up, um, I think it's Cranston's, um, 
just says family vacations during school time are not, are not considered an excused absence. However, students will be provided the opportunity to make up their work um, upon their return. Students will have the equivalent time out of school to make up their work. Three days out equal three days to make up the work. Um, schools will not provide school work before the vacation. I think something like that is important, especially like for the expectation of teachers mm -hmm. and their time and yeah. not preparing things. And that's and, pretty standard. Yeah, then, with, a, with a little bit of a, you know, if you want to go on vacation, that's fine. Yeah. They will not be excused. However, we'll let you make up work. And yep. Yep. But we're not going to give you fifteen packets of stuff for your kid yep. to take on exactly. said vacation kind of energy. Yep. And we definitely, Jen, to your point of what you just said, whatever we end up with, we want to make sure that this policy aligns with the grading policy. If it does reference anything about missed work or anything mm -hmm. like that, um, like, you know, that you want to make sure that those aren't in conflict. Because yeah. I can see them referencing something. And I had let the, all the building administrators know, um, you know, that this was being put on the table so that, you know, they could review it if they wanted, and I know that we're due for an update at some point on the grading discussions that we had shortly, so we'll make sure to do those two together. Does our pol current policy reference the actual law? Um, there is, it, it doesn't reference it in the policy, but if you scroll so down to yep, where I pulled in the regulations, it's referenced it comes in down there. there. Yeah. Okay. But I did put a note up top that we should reference what the actual law yep. is. 16901. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll review this at our next admin council okay. meeting. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so the next one is also attendance related. Um, and it is the uh, deviation from attendance boundaries. Um, this one covers um, students coming from one school that's not their home district to go into a different school. Um, and I think this is one that's gonna you know, require some additional discussion. Two, um, some of the questions that I had on this um, it needs to be updated for inclusive language, but um, the um, first thing that it says is um, the policy is set forth for the purpose of providing school committee expectations in a situation where it becomes desirable or necessary. Um, and so I, I questioned that off the bat because I think um, I wanted to make sure that we clarify whether our policy is that we're doing this because of need or we're doing it because of wants. And I think those are two different things and desirable kind of leaves it open to, I would like my child to go someplace else because I would like them to um, versus, you know, so maybe there's another word. Like I know desire might mean there's like a need, uh, like other than just a, a want, but just that phrasing there. Um, and then the philosophy, it says, in setting forth this philosophy, the school committee recognizes that its members and members of the administrative staff may receive requests, but I, the school committee shouldn't be getting requests directly for redistricting. So that, I think, should come they out. Don't. That's not even the process. No, I know. Oh, like, so, but the policy just needs to be changed. The policy the just, just needs to be written. Change. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it says, in addition, the committee is committed to assuring that equal educational opportunities maintained for all students throughout the district. I think that should be equitable, not equal, because we, that's what we strive for, is equity, not equal. Um, um, I didn't know, are we still calling the teachers union the teachers association? Is that its actual name? So I think that would have to be updated because it says that we're violating the agreement with the teachers association, so we would have to change that. And then my other two questions were, there's nothing in here that covers siblings. So like if sibling A is in school and then sibling B comes in, like how are those requests handled? Um, and then the other thing is, is, is that there's no process in here for the school committee to be notified of transfers like in and out of schools. Um, yeah, like an attendance boundary report kind of right. energy. Yeah. 
And I feel like that's something that would be important to know, like how often that's happening and kind of the where's and the ins and outs of where that's happening. And any budgetary impacts and or like, yeah. like, like themes to be able to right. understand. Right. That's why not just the number, but like the in and the out, like. And then just lots of updating for parent and guardian. Um, but those were my, and I, you know, I'm not sure of the actual process, so whether this process is still. I would also say something about, um, and I would defer, of course, to, to the administration on it, but um, about timeline of like when you can request those things. You know, like, you know, yeah. I think that's important to set that expectation that, because if it comes really late or, you know, like, like kind of at least what like the ideal timeline or time frame would be. Yeah. So maybe I'll find something there. You know, and then there was a part in here about um after an attendance area change has been approved at the size of the class to which the reassigned student's place can become so large as to cause the, you know, us to violate the clause or predict the potential to split the class and hire a new teacher, then the approval of reassignment may be revoked at any time during the school year as determined necessary by the superintendent. Now, if I were a parent and I was reading that, like, and my child had to be in a different school for some reason, that might strike fear into my heart. And so I don't know if that is the practice, but, or maybe there is a, or not, but maybe there is another way to like the way I read this if I have a child who's out of district for whatever reason I could be getting a phone call at any time to say you need to get your kid out of that school and move them back to your home school which would be very disruptive I'm not sure why that's here I'm, I don't know in a, in a situation when we would do that because we tell everyone it goes year to year which means they're here for the entire school year so I think that's something moved. to you mean because like, let's say that there's a, a fourth grade student going from school A to school B <coughs> following year which is something I'm looking at now and going through is okay so fifth grade is there space for that child because it's the students that live within that area that will be going into that fifth grade class first before someone from out of the area so it's on a yearly basis at the end of the school year yeah and I think it covers so something would, else then too that it's on like a year word this so it's clear yeah. that that's what it is so it's not like oh it's January and I'm sorry you can't be here anymore yeah yeah because yeah, that's the way it reads mm -hmm. it's not in the best interest of the, of the no. student no matter no. what the situation no. is this policy when I was looking at other examples from other districts for mm -hmm. tennis back boundary policies, I was noticing a lot of them referenced, like for lack of a better word, like redistricting mm -hmm. and, and that process. Do we have, where does that land in our policies? We do have a redistricting yeah. policy. Yeah, and we have a completely we separate a completely one, right? Separate one. Yep, and so I do think when we are looking at this one and looking at that one, making sure yeah. again that they are connected and, and referenced. Yeah. yeah, just because like some of these things are, this person, this policy is when the parent or guardian is initiating the request that one is when the administration is doing it for yes. like purposes of education but like you want those to be consistent yes. of like yep. that same the thing we were just talking about particularly. Yep, should be the same yeah yep. so maybe Ken when you review this maybe just proactively pull that too and then when we see this yeah. again we'll put is that, that way on the, yep. yeah Anybody else have questions or concerns on this one? Is there, there's, I'm assuming there's no form for this? For the request? Yeah. There's, Is there one? Yeah, they have to complete something. It's a, I think it's a Google form if I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so if there is some sort of process like that, I would say we reference that because we reference other forms yeah. in other policies because I do think you would want consistent data on the request and, you know, being able to time stop. You don't just want it to be an email and so if that is the case, we should reference it in this. Yeah. 
Yeah, like it even referenced applications for policy deviation, but it doesn't reference like how to actually make that application. Yep. Yeah, like some other ones we yeah. have, like say, like can be found here on the website or, you know. Copy of form attached. Yeah. Sure. yeah. see this one again yeah and I think just definitely getting um, you know feedback from from the administration mm -hmm. of course on that yeah. one is, is really important yeah I agree um, so the next are all new and all have some form of a red line. We've seen hate motivated be hate motivated behavior before. We've talked about cultural appropriation before. We have not seen we talked about dress code or inclement weather. Does anybody have a preference which area we take these? I mean, which order we take these in? I do not. Okay. So I was driving Andrew crazy this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I came up with my my last version of a draft for the. Um, Hate motivated behavior, and that is the one that is called. Was that today, Jen? That I that's, didn't it's dated chance. from today. Yes. Okay, I did, I, that's the why I did not. Is that the twelve thirty three one? It is from twelve thirty three. So, like I know we've talked about this a lot, and we've gone back and forth, and like I think the overall purpose of this is because we want to ensure that our students are in a learning environment that is safe and non, you know free of harassment, but at the same time, we also want to make sure that we're not impinging on anybody's freedom of speech. Um, and it's important, I think, to recognize that one of the things that educators do is educate, <laughs> and part of that is providing resources on why things like speech that harms people is bad. Um, so I tried to rework this from that aspect. Um, I tried to, uh, Andrew had a couple questions that I think I either got rid of or addressed. Most of them, Andrew, some of them, one or two of them still changes. But basically what this policy says is that, you know, all members of our educational community are entitled to environment free of harassment. Um, you know, we think that the best way we can combat that is to be preventative. Um, and teach students like how like to recognize and appreciate cultural diversity, um, and so as part of that, the district will provide students with age-appropriate instruction and will provide teaching staff with the tools that they need to do that, and that the school committee will be a voice against those types of behaviors, and we will also not tolerate things in our school that disrupt the educational environment when it comes to hateful conduct, language, and symbols. Um, so this is my latest attempt at this. Which one was it, Jen? Um, Here, I'll bring you on. Well, I was just in it? It has a... Mm, no, you're not in it. No, the old Aaron's one. the only one who's in it. It was the one with the most recent timestamp. That's all right. It's like five thirteen. Yes. Got it. So I think the biggest thing for me is like, I don't think, like I think, I still think it's important to have something like this, but I definitely think like having the district attorneys go through mm -hmm. and like marketing concern yeah. is really important and then also like having the administration go through and think about the practicality of like implementing yep. a policy like this and then also we have at the same time obviously the um, discipline yep. committee on that side but you know so I think like I think you definitely did a nice job moving this forward, um, especially like with the concerns that we had last time, but I think we probably have to circle back with those same folks. Oh, absolutely. To, yeah. Just the one thing I just, and I keep trying to re remind the discipline subcommittee about yep. this too, is that policy is not to implement discipline per se, it's to ensure that the discipline that we have is enforced equitably. Yep. Okay. Yep. I do think that one of the charges is looking at um, 
uh, best practice recommendations yes. for positive, like educational, yes. educational things, things. Yes. and that's where I see it crossing yeah, over with this. When you were talking yeah. about the education yeah. piece, that's the that's the only part that I yeah. see those two um, uh, intersecting in a good way. So yeah, so if everybody can just review this again, then we can talk about it again when people have time to have had time to digest it. Um, but I did a lot more research on hate speech and Thank ways to combat you. it and. Uh, did a lot of deep diving into other districts and other states who are doing good work in this area, California in particular. Um, so the next is cultural appropriation, which kind of walks hand in hand with this one. Um, this is... Ken, I know we had talked before and you said that um, you were gonna handle this at the administrative level, but I'd so, really like to see this yeah, formalized. And, and so I also shared it with all of the principals and discussed it at the council today as well. Okay. About this and asked them to please review it, give some feedback, talk about different situations that popped up, a recent one, and we just asked them to please really just, you know, for everyone to understand the importance of this and the difference from teaching about cultures appropriateness of it yep. and certain things like you know, and I, I gave very, you know it was very um, <coughs> blunt with the examples of like when we're teaching a culture it's one thing but then when we're maybe reenacting in yep. a way where we're addressing like that culture that's disrespectful to the others and just really being aware of that okay so I do think um, I think that's awesome I think having a policy to back you up on that you know so say you have that conversation with your team and then they don't listen and they do it anyways you know that's where I think having this at least and I don't think it needs to be wildly lengthy but I do think having it outlined a little bit is really helpful um, and I also think getting Rob um, Rob's input on it as far as like where it goes into the curriculum and in that sort of pieces of like how the projects that students are doing and different things and where that lands um, I think is important too because it's it's both in and out of that and, I, and he's in, as the assistant superintendent right curriculum right. and whatnot right. so I think that's another piece. Of and it I, as well. I found some really good resources online just from some other school districts um, just explaining the difference between you know, this one's a cultural cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation you know understanding cultural appropriation in the sense of um, costumes versus mm -hmm. like what what that means yeah. um, and I said you know we want to be teaching about cultures that you know it's part of history it's part of world language and it's happening in the schools it's just to the extent of understanding the respectfulness of it to each other's cultures at the risk of sounding like a broken record this goes back to training our staff in general on mm -hmm. things like culturally responsive right. curriculum and implicit bias and microaggressions and things like that um, but I would like to see this solidified into a policy because this discussion has happened even yeah. before you multiple times so are you do you want to come to us with a red line? Do you want me to red line so this? How do you what I, handle so it? So what I did, the one that we have, I shared it with them asked them to okay. please provide some comments on it. Okay, perfect. We get them access to just comment only, so we, they can go through yep. and do that, get that back to us, and then we can see if it's anything we can add or change to it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, the next is dress code. So we talked about a year, two years ago maybe? No, about, it was, no I was here, so it was a year ago. But it, before you came, we talked in the DEI side committee. Maybe, but I definitely was at the high school and was part of a conversation. Okay, so there have been <coughs> multiple conversations yeah. about dress codes, and the the administration at the time had said that they wanted to handle it at um, the school level, and I feel that based on some things that have come up, that we need to have a district policy on this. And I did redline it, and I didn't put it in the drive. So bear with me one second. Um, because there's too much uh, differences between each school and some of the language that is being used is definitely not um, best practices in terms of how dress codes are regarded these days in terms of you know student mental well-being and equity and all of that stuff so I'm going to listen to And there definitely shouldn't be two different dress codes between the middle schools. Like those should 100% be the same. It should be the same thing. Um, so this is based on um, best practices for student dress codes uh, based on ACLU, 
based on other districts that have what they consider to be model practices. And it basically just says students have to wear a shirt, they have to wear pants, they have to wear shoes, they have to wear things that... Um, <laughs> that I've not seen this yet, as, the, as you're reading yep. it on class. Where are we, get Jen? Oh, I put it, I put it, in, the, okay, I put it in the drive, sorry. And it's under dress code? It should say, dra it says draft dress code, yep. And then the one that, yep, okay, the six o'clock one. You know, they have to wear things that are safe. They can't wear things that are going to incite violence. And, um, you know, students and parents are their best judge of what is acceptable and what isn't. And students should not be um, <coughs> disciplined or removed from class as a consequence for wearing things that are in violation of the policy or asked to wear clothes that do not belong to them. It also provides for, um, Religious attire. What do you think the next step is on this one? Um, is it same thing? Have Kevin? Come yeah, feedback okay. from. Like, I'm yeah. never coming to another policy. Most meeting certainly not. Drafting his designation letter. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. 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 We know where Andrew falls on this. I remember it very strongly. Yeah, this, this is great. I, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> the administration doesn't like to hear me say that. Yeah. But yeah, nope. And I know Consumer? people have big feelings about dress codes, but I, I mean, it, it really, we, this district should not be policing students' bodies, their dresses, anything. And if it is a, you know, the, the distraction is <coughs> not up to the student to manage if somebody else is distracted by their body. And another, this is, you know, and it was really interesting because I read something, Newport just recently um, revised their dress code, and I read something that was really, I thought was a great point. There was some hoopla about, um, hoopla's probably not the best word, but pajamas. Pajamas were up for discussion, and some people were very, no, students should be able to, should not be able to wear pajamas. Other people were like, yes, students should be able to wear pajamas, and people were saying, we're preparing our students for the future. And then people were like, we want our students to come to class. And if our students feel comfortable coming to class in pajamas, we want them to come to class. So if they're gonna be in pajamas, we should let them be in pajamas. Like at the end of the day, we want our students in the building. And if- There are a lot of kids that wear those pajama yeah. pants. I know pajamas is an issue here. It's yeah. just like, that's the point. Like we want students to come to class and if we're putting barriers on them in terms of what they can and cannot wear, some yeah. students are not gonna feel comfortable coming. Yeah, what I hear you saying is that, like, like trying to remember as we're working through these, like the main mission and goal of why we're here, and that is that education of students. Yeah, understood. And they can't learn if they're not in the building. Um, yeah, and I think the other piece of it too is there is a lot of, um, for lack of a better word, legal cases on this one. Like it's not just the opinion of, it is, there's a lot of precedent sent from, oh, from from legal cases, I'm looking at some of the things um, on the ACLU's website about this, and so I think that's an important piece of it too. Even if our buildings think one thing or people think one thing, like it really all comes back to, you know, if a student did push the district, where would our policy land mm -hmm. in comparison to these cases? And we know the answer to that. Yeah, so and, and, and I think it's so just aligning it. To Sorry, that. but yeah, and you also need to make sure it's got to be whatever it is. It has to be enforceable. Across equally the board. Mm -hmm. across yeah, the no board. Title and nine, that's, I, but no, I mean I think it, it you know one yeah. what one principal finds offensive another may not what one yeah. principal finds is too revealing another may not and those cases are almost impossible to win because that's how that it ends up being I'm disciplining you for wearing this tank top well here are pictures of you know Andrew and Jen and Aaron and Ken all wearing the same tank top at the school across mm -hmm. uh, across the way no problems there why do we have problems here yeah that Consistency, yeah. Very difficult to enforce, very. Okay, so, so, okay. so we'll see this one again. 
also can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm shaking my head. <laughs> yes. I'm reading um, it as I. So I think well, when Jen and I were we, when we were talking about which ones, what to put on, what not to put on, like thinking forward, you know, like starting conversations now so that when we go into September, things are aligned. Like we were trying to think strategically about timeline and when things come up and when hand get books get presented. Like that's why. There's so many on no, no, for, this for you all. This makes sense because yeah. all this impacts yeah, what they're yeah. doing over the summer. Yeah, we tried to think about that. Families, yeah, exactly. Right, school years. Yeah, so that's why, and again, we know that you know there's a lot of priorities right now, but right. that was why we. Yeah, we put tried to think of the ones that were time yeah, strategically for yeah. approaching the next school year. Um, and so then the last one is we don't have an inclement weather or an extreme weather policy. Um, and I, I actually, we need, one. we need one. And there's not a lot in Rhode Island that I could find really that has one. Middletown has one, uh, East Greenwich has one. So I dropped those into the folder. And then I found two other um, policies from other districts that kind of covered, I thought really well, because it didn't just cover hot, it covered, I mean, it didn't just cover cold, it covered hot. Uh, and um, I think whatever we do has to be both because it's not just snowy weather it's you know i think the conversation started with the the really hot days we mm -hmm. had thus fall and mm -hmm. and giving the the administration some guidance and guidelines that are pretty established to be able to work off of you know so obviously it would be within the administration's purview but to give some sort of baseline for expectations for to, to be able to help support, I think, the administration right. in making decisions yeah. is, is what I think is important for a policy like this. And we had the thing come up with Jamestown, and we want to incorporate that with the, you know, yep. in the event of a bridge closure, like what the notification yeah, protocol is important. there, which is something, you know, I know most of us trying to find what I sent out earlier in the year. Oh, you did. You had it. I remember that. Yep. Um, kind of like process procedure for the yep. district yep. now. Of course, because I want to I have it, I'm sure I don't. So. Um, information regarding inclement weather plans from December. Here it is. Yep. School closure, early dismissal procedures. Yeah, so maybe working that yep. in. I think that's just helpful to have that base. You know, obviously things can change, et cetera, but I think to, to make sure that community members, teachers, et cetera, know. Yeah, and also like you know when when that decision is made, like if it's gonna be a, if if it's reasonable to assume that it's gonna be a snow day, like let's not wait till five in the morning to call it. Like let's assist parents in finding care for their children by calling it you know yeah. as early as possible the day before. Not, not a lot of people like to do that. I know. <laughs> yeah, I think you make yeah. I think um, another piece of it too is not just thinking about. The students but also thinking like to that jamestown example like there were teachers mm -hmm. like we had folks that live in, in yeah. different like in yeah. different things like that and so i think that's a piece too to consider i don't know exactly what where it would land but i do think that you know when we're talking about cancellations and inclement weather and you know i always come back to safety and like yep. what is going to be most safe and you never want to have employees trying to get somewhere or do something Rushing that would be to, yeah yes, that wouldn't be absolutely. safe and so yeah. i always come from it from a safety perspective um. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, another piece that I'm just thinking about feedback that we've gotten related to inclement weather. Um, the piece about like when or when when students do or do not go outside, particularly mm -hmm. for the elementary schools for recess. Um, I remember some correspondence about the pavement, weather, the pavement uh, being too hot, or it's too cold out, mm -hmm. so they stayed in, but then people thought they should go out, or you know, but there's recommendations from the state yeah. as to when you should be letting them out or not yeah. based on the temperature yeah the so maybe some um some of that language could mm -hmm. be in this as well so it's not just about cancellation but also about you know giving the building administrators some guidance about that as well for safety of dehydration frostbite all that sort mm -hmm. of fun stuff mm -hmm. but also trying to get students you know knowing that fresh air is good for students and all of that yeah and then heat too like we started about in the beginning like you know what is the um procedure for yeah. that, yeah. like, do we have one? Especially with not all of our buildings being air conditioned. Air -conditioned. Yeah. Um, 
So same thing, we want feedback. Yep. Yeah, and I'm happy because there isn't a red line. Like if you want to give me or somebody, delegate somebody to give me some bullet points, like of the main things you want in it, I'm happy to start a draft that we can discuss. Just point them in my direction with what it is. Um, you can always too start with like the, you said what, EG and Milltown have one. So yeah. you can just start with those yeah. like thrown in a document, not even like as a, this is our proposed policy, just to give some, yeah, like, I guess we think I'll this is reasonable. Yeah, I just think it's. And then you can take out what yeah. you want or add what you want. I'll do that, Ken. I'll send that to you. Okay, thank you. I just shared the letter just so you have it. Yeah, okay, that's around the blood that we did that stuff. Um, I just realized I never actually hit send on that UCAP thing, sorry. Um, <laughs> I noticed it like 30 minutes ago, and I just gave up, so. It's in my draft. It's fine. Um, and you I read it to us. that, and there are still some more on that list that I'll just bring through slowly, like a few at a time, because most of them are quick little, like a line here, a line there. Um, we got most of the big ones taken care of already, but I just want to clean up that list while we can. Um, so unless anybody has I think um, going on to item five, mm -hmm. um, when Ken's talking, so it says future policy topics. So yep. um, I think something that would be helpful um, is knowing from either your admin council or the building folks, like are there policies that they're, that aren't in alignment with, you know, that they, that aren't working for them, you know, when starting to think, I know we started this process trying to just really triage things that we needed to, et cetera, but then, you know, really we want to make sure that the policies are working for the building mm -hmm. folks. So it would be, I think, helpful to get some feedback on ones that they want us to look at yeah. for, for the next I'll year. I'll ask them. I generally we do yeah. want to bring the um, building use policy yeah. back up again. Yeah. Put a few points in there and then GCD came up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and yeah, so if there's any so others, you know, I think it, policies are only as good as mm -hmm. they are. If they're, Implemented and so making sure that you know getting consistent feedback from folks. Then I know we still have some other ones to work through too. Yeah. Um, so can I? I think you are not available on. Wait. So. Oh my God. No, it wasn't that one. So two weeks is Memorial Day. Oh my God, that's insane. Memorial Day week. Um, so if that Monday doesn't work. Um, and you're not available Tuesdays, or you're not available Wednesdays? It depends each week. Okay. So what week are we looking at? It was Rob that had the consistent conflict, not Ken. Yeah. Andrew, Rob. are you free on the 28th? Oh, you do one second. You, oh, that's a Tuesday? Um, I've got a meeting in Exeter West Greenwich at 6. Okay, uh, so no. Um, what about Wednesday the 29th? Yep, I can Wednesday be here from 5 o'clock. You can't. You can't. Okay. I mean, books, like, all like, week three. Okay, let's see. What about... So, if... Can I throw some dates out that? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sunday, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we pick you back a meeting? Or something, you know what I mean? Yep. Sometimes that... Especially this time of year. So Monday, May 27th, I have policy. We're not meeting Monday, May 27th? Well, I'm happy to, but it's Memorial Day. Oh, now look at that policy okay. subcommittee, 5 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what is that? The 28th? Is it now? Andrew can't make it the 28th. Uh, yeah, I'd have to be out of here by 5 30. 29th? 29th, I can't do. 30th, I can't do. So we have honors night at 6.30. Do you have something before that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't have. So if we, we need like Rob or honest, you. trying to, like, get there and, like, it's just. Well, I was going to say we could do it there. We've done that before where we've met at the high school. Like, if we're all going to be going there. But also, if that's not, I mean, if there's another day, we can do another day. But I was just trying. I know it's not going to get better the next week. Yeah, because the awards night is Monday. Yeah, and, like, family, and, like, that's going to impact, like, my daughter for that for that night mm -hmm. just like you know, no, it's a okay. little bit of time yeah. in between monday's not going to work because we have awards night tuesday's school committee do you want to do it before awards night or Wednesday. is it the same thing um because that's at seven it's a little later so how early i just 
need to be able to get home and get there. Just uh, we could do it at the high school. Um, or we could do like a four thirty here. Yeah, we're gonna have four thirty. Which night is this? This would be Monday the third. Can we do four? Is that where is that? I can't meet meet until after four thirty. Can we do all right? We do 4 30 5 30 that gives me time to get home and then back there i just i need a little bit of time in between for in between these events and everything but if we do 4 30 or 5 30 that's an hour that's i think we're just uh-huh is an hour enough um I, well, here, I'm going to have to leave at 5.30. I, I need I just, you or I need Rob. I don't need yeah. you both. I just need yeah. a quorum. So I guess my question would be, is Rob's availability any better than yours? I will, we'll, I will check with him tomorrow. <laughs> I, I'm just going to be honest. Right now, at this end of the year, we both of us are involved in so many things that are school-related. Yeah. And then fam, the family yeah, no, stuff. I get it. I guess he has it blocked it's, off on his calendar. So. I would say schedule it for Monday the third at four thirty. Four thirty. One of us will be there. Yeah. I just and if you have to leave early, yeah. then. Uh, but yeah. Rob has pretty much told me he can't make Mondays. He can only make Wednesdays, which is why he's not here tonight. So I'll schedule it for the third at four thirty. Are you available? Because the fifth's not an option. The fifth is an option for me. It's fine with me. Okay, I can do the fifth. Ken? I can do the fifth. Because so, and it doesn't have to be Ken. Like that's the other thing yeah, is right. that we just need one of right. one of them, yes. right? And so you all can flip flop depending mm-hmm. on on schedules and stuff that week. I know it stinks to have three things in a row, but that might be better because then you might if Rob can do that. You know Rob can't do the Monday, but he might be able to do the Wednesday, right. and then I that mean, would leave. That's less yeah. pressure for you on the third. Yeah, and if, if we can't, I'd rather do it on. I mean, something on the two things on the same night just so I'm not out every single night of the week. I don't think an hour is enough, though. But That's the, the challenge. Like, like if we're going to go through the hate motivated, like, if you're coming back with feedback on four of the, like, some of those, that doesn't seem like we're going to get through much. Like, I feel like it's a little bit better to do at least an hour and a half. I agree. So we'll do 5 o'clock on the 5th. Can we take the 3rd off? No 3rd. Okay. 5 o'clock on the 5th. Is that what your preference is? So six five five o'clock. I'll, re- I'll send out a reschedule and write. Okay. Thank you all. We'll make a motion to adjourn. Just a second. All in favor?